Welcome back to America's only national treasure, and I am its host. <laughs> I am a host, Jill Chacha, and I'm actually with America's other national treasure, Marissa Riley. Thank you. Thank you. It is me, <laughs> one of the national treasures. Um, actually, my co-host is also a, a national treasure. I'll and take it. Yeah. I'll fucking yeah. take it. So are um, all of our listeners. You are all National treasures. National treasures. Um, for listening to us. That's right. And just for being. And for existing. Just, yeah. Just for being there. You worked hard this year. But just, ugh. You stayed inside as much as you could. That's right. You wore a mask. You wore a mask. You earned all of that you, wine. You checked into people. You earned all of that wine. You checked into, like, how your people are doing. Yeah, That's you good. texted your friends and you texted them back. Sometimes. Yeah. Like in a reasonable amount of time. Yeah. And that makes you a treasure. What a treasure. You are all treasures. Uh, today. Yeah. Another treasure is this in betweeny 015. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about some horrible shit um, that you are not privy to. You don't know what we're going to talk about today. I don't. Lots of times I will kind of know. I'll get a little yeah. hint I'll earlier drop, in the I'll week. I'll drop a little something. But I. I I left you in the cold with this one because it's there are some visuals that are just you cannot unsee, and I I really wanted you to see them for the first time in front of everyone. Amazing! So. <laughs> I'm pumped. I'm pumped to see them. I'm pumped to think about them when I turn out the lights tonight. Yeah. Pumped to deep Google, uh, whatever it is. Yes. You're about to um, unleash unleash upon you upon me. Fantastic. Uh, I guess we should begin. Then. Let's, let's do let's it. Let's fucking do it. So, speaking of 2020, it was quite the fucking year, yeah. and definitely for one particular woman in Italy, uh, which for her it reached new levels of hell. I guess oh, you could say, no. uh, according to Gizmodo.com and and LiveScience.com. All right, I'm just gonna come out and say it. Let's do it. Okay, the woman grew eyelash-like hairs out of the gums in her mouth, and despite all you know the removal and the hormone treatment they just they just keep growing back out of her mouth so sorry. okay yes. so i mean i'm sorry you should be um i'm sorry you should be i i mean her hand is, is fully covering her mouth right now because i'm scared it's gonna happen to me um <laughs> Okay, so we'll, we'll get into the odds of it happening to everyone. Good, because of I course mean, I looked into that. Yeah. Um. Uh, so here's the thing. Okay. okay, it's 2020, right? We're gonna pause on this really soon. for a few more days. Yes, <laughs> for a few more. Oh God. <laughs> it's gonna feel like three months until but, 2020. But when it's 2021, it's everything's gonna magically be okay, <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> so. Um. No, but it's 2020. The worst is happening. Yeah. We're dealing with so many different things, specifically a plague. Well, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. And, um, you know, all of our doctors, our, uh, all of our nurses, all of our, you know, medical professionals are very occupied with this fucking plague. Yeah. And, um, and then you're at home, you're quarantining. You're figuring out how to order shit online. Mm -hmm. You're figuring out how to make it to the grocery store and home alive. Yeah. With all of your, you know, PPE and whatnot. It's fucking stressful. It's traumatic. And then out of, you know, then on top of everything, um, you're growing hair out of your mouth. And yeah. um, how the fuck do you go to a doctor and say, like, <laughs> look, okay, I know you're, like, treating all these people who are dying of COVID. <laughs> uh... um, but there is hair growing out of my <laughs> That's so scary. I I already feel for this person. I know so little about them, and it's it. I I mean, it, I it, it might, did. I mean, on your bingo card, to, hair growing out of your mouth would not be on it. No, not not be on it. No. Uh, all right, let's continue. Uh, let's do it. God help us. Okay. Ugh. So, uh, Christina Zurakivska. A clinical dental researcher at the University of Foggia, I've probably said all of those words wrong, including the English ones, um, they were so intrigued by the case, they wrote a study of which uh, all of this reporting is based on. Amazing. Turns out the woman's symptoms began over a decade ago in 2009, around the tender age of 19. 
Very tender. Very. Although, you know what? Every age is tender right now. <laughs> it's, it's, Just, we're, we're all... Everything, what a level playing field we're all in. Yeah, everything, kind of. every single age sounds tender. <laughs> Except for maybe like 33. I feel like you guys are fine, but... Oh, you know I'm older than 33, right? And you know I'm younger than 33. <laughs> I feel like it's all... We're, we're all trying to figure it out. Uh, well... There's no such thing as time, actually. So it's it's a construct. Right? Uh, Except for the hair in your mouth. That's right. Let's get back to that. That's the real thing. Uh, her doctor's appointment focused on the hairs, and additional tests uh, found ovarian cysts. Uh, these symptoms together led doctors to believe they were caused by quote polycystic ovary syndrome (PCOS). Very familiar. Women with PCOS tend to produce more testosterone than normal, which can lead to increased growths of hair uh, on the body, a complication called hirsutism, end quote. Horrifying. Um, also, high, <laughs> high testosterone causes acne, so she probably had multiple uh, face things that she wasn't too excited about. <sighs> so I feel for you. Yeah. God damn it. This extra hair growth usually happens where you think it would happen, like the face, chest, the back and such. Mm. Uh, This mouth hair situation is extremely rare and has only been documented five other times in all of medical history, which is a very long time. Jesus. Uh, And in those few times, uh, the growth was found in all dudes, so this woman is extra, extra special. Wow. She's the only recorded woman to ever have hair growing uh in her mouth Uh, so she must have been i don't know (laughs) not (laughs) feeling not feeling extra special in these moments god um in 2009 doctors treated her pcos with oral hormonal contraceptives also known as the pill Mm -hmm. and of course plucked the damn hairs Uh, and four months into the treatment the hair stopped growing uh, which Amazing. sounds like the end, but it's not. Of course not. <laughs> no. Of course not. Uh, fast forward into the woman's mid-twenties when she at some point took herself off the pill and everything came back with a vengeance. Oh, God, so, no. The extra hair grew from the usual pl- uh, the places that we spoke about, uh, like the neck and the chin and so forth, but brown lashes also peeked out from the spaces between her teeth. No. Yes. No. I'm so sorry. You should be. I'm I, so sorry. I'm sorry, too. Um, this is a nightmare. I'm <laughs> so sorry. Oh. And I'm really sorry I have to do this. Um, I'm going to show you a picture. No. <laughs> I'm so no. Sorry. Look, normally I'm pumped for these pictures. I am not pumped for this picture. I will look at it, though. Yeah. Will okay. we put it on the Instagram? I don't know. I think we will. You think we I'll, will? I'll do it with a trigger warning. Like, a, I'll do a slide before the, like, a trigger warning that says, there's fucking hair and these teeth together. In her goddamn mouth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so, again, are you ready? No. No, but no. show it to me anyway. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, I want to slowly scroll down. Oh, I hate it. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. Um, it's not as bad as I thought it would be, to be honest. <laughs> it just looks like she was eating, like, hair spaghetti, and it, you know, little pieces got... Oh, God, it's so creepy. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry. It's like little eyelashes between her teeth. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, <laughs> I can't. I really can't. Uh, it's... it's I Does it feel like, you know, when you get, like, corn stuck in your teeth do you think yeah. it feels like that i don't know and i hope i never know i mean <laughs> I, it, it just looks like like parsley or like a spinach or something like that or, or like if you eat um but like it, a smoked meat and the, the fat pieces <laughs> get in between your teeth i don't know man. pineapple i i don't know I, i'm uh, just okay i feel <laughs> i feel grossed out <laughs> i want to brush my okay. teeth so bad okay. <laughs> so uh, quoting Gizmodo here, quote, according to the case study published in the February issue of Oral Surgery, Oral Medicine, Oral Pathology, and Oral Radiology, all one title. Is that all one it's title? All, it's, it's, Y'all, calm it's a, down. Let's just a, call it oral. No, let's not. Um, <laughs> I see why they did that. Okay. Um, <laughs> keep the title. I get it. It's, <laughs> it's easier to find if you Google all those things than just orals. <laughs> or, or they could... Name it oral, but not like porn, like science <laughs> stuff. That I think 
Do you think they would like that title? I think we'll, we'll send them an email. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Uh, in the February issue of this year, uh, the one of oral dot, dot gov. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. The woman's mouth hairs were removed a second time while tissue samples from her mouth were taken for study. She was also referred to an endocrinologist and asked to visit back three months later, which she apparently never did. <laughs> End quote. I get it. She's got a lot. I on know. Her plate. I do get it. I mean, the dentist is like frightening to begin with. Yeah. When you don't have hair growing from your gums. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, going for a cleaning is terrifying, let alone a trimming. <laughs> a trimming. It's like, oh, no. Oh, fuck. Uh, tell me more. Okay. So she did go back eventually okay. a year later. All right. Uh, when, their, when the hairs made their way between. Her front teeth. No. And I'm going to show you a picture. Okay. Okay? Okay. 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 Oh! I'm so sorry. No. No. Make it go away. Make it go away. Make it go away. Okay. Okay. Do you even want to describe what that was? I mean, all I'm going to say, tuft of hair between the gap. Between, yeah. She had a small gap between her... With most of us do have a little uh, gap. Gaps, yeah, love, love, cute. Tuft of hair between the gaps. No. So, I'm so sorry. I so sorry. We gotta this. That's like emergency dental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why probably, probably she went back. It was yeah. yeah. She yeah. Now doctors believe since the hair growth went dormant on while on uh, hormone treatment, this condition is probably very much related to the, her PCOS. Yeah. Uh, which will eventually. I mean, it's going to be a lifelong thing for yeah. her. Uh, but thankfully, it can be controlled with the pill or any such prescription. Right. Um, now, if you got flashbacks from biology 101 class about hair and teeth growing from similar material like keratin, yeah. uh, you're not far off. Oh. Um, Quoting uh, Gizmodo again, quote, it's not biologically implausible that hair can grow in the mouth, <laughs> Zira Kivska said, mm. <laughs> the, uh, the dental lady. Um, yeah. Our mouth's tissues uh, develop in the womb from the same layer of cells that give rise to our outer skin. Wow. And they have the potential to grow structures typically, typically found in our skin cells like... Uh, sebaceous glands sebaceous sebaceous Mm -hmm. thank you sebaceous glands and hair uh indeed extra sebaceous glands in the mouth which look like yellow or whitish bumps are very common and harmless thing end quote it's basically um common it's like acne sebaceous glands um when they fill up that causes acne Ah. and lots of times people people who have pcos or high testosterone i went through it a little bit um the testosterone causes those sebaceous glands to Holy kind of shit. flare up. Okay. So and she's just got more more glands. That's right. We all in, have these glands, apparently, and structures in, in our mouths, but they don't activate and grow hair most of the time. Uh, but, but they're there, and you know about them, and now we know about them, and yeah. we all know about them, and I'm sorry. So <laughs> I'm sorry, too. Um, <laughs> so, oh, God. Oh, man. Ah, uh, okay. Our, uh, well, we do have a palate cleanser. Um, Excellent. And it's going to be amazing. We're going to talk about aggressive peacocks uh, terrorizing people in no other state where that can possibly happen. In Florida. I love it. Yeah. So yes. please, stay with us. Please do. Hello, everyone. You may recognize me as Gabby from the History of Everything podcast. And my name is Brenna, and you don't recognize me from anything yet. Together, we're two scientists who explore all of the weird little questions and conspiracies of the universe in our new podcast, Mystery of Everything. Everything has an explanation. We hope. But that is what we're here to figure out. We will dive into the science behind many popular conspiracy theories, such as vaccines causing autism, flat earth theory, and was the moon landing fake? And if so, why the heck would anyone even do that? But it's not just conspiracies. There's a lot of cool mysteries that we will attempt to use science to explain, such as near-death experiences, what made the Vikings go berserk, and can I control my co-host with MK Ultra? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, make sure to check out the Mischief Everything podcast everywhere where you find your podcasts. We're the All Creatures Podcast. Each week, Angie and I explore and share amazing details about the many animals we share our world with. Plus, Chris and I are both 
PhD scientists and educators. So we do the deep dives in the scientific research and then come back and share what we learn in a fun and casual way. We also speak with other scientists, animal experts, activists, and many other conservation enthusiasts from all over the planet. So you can find the All Creatures podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Hey everyone, Jill Chacha here from Well That's Interesting, and I am absolutely thrilled to tell you about Spotify for Podcasters. I use it, I love it, and it all started by downloading the free Spotify for Podcasters app, which has all the tools you need in one place to record and edit your masterpiece of a podcast. Spotify for Podcasters also distributes your show to all major platforms. So when you hit publish, your episodes will stream not only on Spotify, but I'm talking about the Apples, the Googles, Stitcher, Good Pods, the other ones. <laughs> You get the idea. And you can monetize your podcast with no minimum listenership required. You could also set up monthly subscriptions and record ads just like this one. So what are you waiting for? Download Spotify for Podcasters today and start changing the world. Oh, and please, stay interesting. And we're back. How's everyone doing? How's everybody doing today? Thank you for asking. Um <laughs> Still traumatized um, by the earlier portion of the podcast, but you know what? (sighs) Yeah, we're moving Uh, on. Yeah, we're We're moving on. We're going to be okay. Yeah. Uh, We're uh, we're going to... (laughs) Sorry, I'm also just thinking about it. Okay. Okay, we're back. And we're now, we're just going to go to a magical fucking place. Yeah. A magical place called Miami, Florida. Oh, wow. Yes. (laughs) And specifically... A section within Miami called Coconut Grove. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Ooh la la. Ooh la la. Now, if that name makes you think of plush greenery, blue coastlines, flowers, and exotic things, again, you're not too far off. Nice. Uh, Coconut Grove is a beautiful fucking spot. Fuck yeah. Give it a Google. Now, it's also home to a creature that makes this, air quotes, noise, as okay. some would phrase it. So I'm going to play this really quick. Um... So this noise, let's see if we can play that. (laughs) Okay, are are we good? I think we're good. Okay. Okay, we can can pause. (laughs) Um... We were listening to that on a YouTube video, and it just paused on, like, a bird with its <laughs> mouth wide open. It was very... Uh, I might have to do a screenshot of this pause and please, put it on next to Please do, because it's... Right after the teeth. Hilarious. It's, like, the most <laughs> glam shot, too. It's like a, God, it's great. It looks like, um, like, Divine the Drag Queen, but screaming. But a bird. But yeah. a bird. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, we're, we're doing a screenshot of that. That's we're amazing. We're for sure. It's, that was... Perfect. That's, you can't plan that any better. No. Um, I wanted to say I'm actually very familiar with the sound of a peacock because yeah. um, there's a place in Austin that it was like, you would go there for brunch, but they also had peacocks. Just like flopping around? Flopping around. While you had like bacon? Yeah, while well, you had like bacon. <laughs> Restaurants there are much bigger. <laughs> <laughs> and so there was like, they were just like outside. Yeah, restaurant. it was kind of like this old like... Um, mansion and and it had like a lot i forgot the name of it but um it had like a lot a lot of space around it and lots of trees and they just let peacocks kind yeah. of roam wild and did the were they owned were they just wild wild you know they i mean i think they were owned because they were owned by whoever owned the property oh, okay i see but yeah they roamed wild and i i think they had whatever version of a coop i'm not sure yeah. i didn't ask any questions <laughs> I usually went there when I was very young and I was just like, this is magical. And I, I didn't ever realize that, yes, they do have to go to sleep somewhere at night that, or during the day. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Holy shit. Well, that is kind of magical. It, uh, yeah. But, um, when, you're but not, your when you're eating your eggs, when you're eating your bacon. But for we're going to get into how it can be unmagical. Excellent. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, so what we just heard... Yeah. My friends, that's the call of one male peacock. Okay. Uh, but this story isn't about one bird. It's more like somewhere between 1,200 and 1,500. Oh, my God. So, 
Okay, so the most I've seen together is like two. Yeah. Um, and then they're big birds. They're like, fucking big. They're, big. they're very large Hard birds. Hard to miss. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, now, if you could please do the honor of reading this NPR headline and the byline. Would love to. Okay. okay. Here it goes. All right. So, peacocks in Miami will be relocated after terrorizing residents, officials say. After residents complained, they were being held hostage by pooping, screaming birds. Miami officials voted to cull some of the hundreds of peacocks that roam the streets of Coconut Grove. That's pooping, right. screaming birds. That's pooping right. had to come first. Yes. Also, the That's right. hostage. That's okay. Elaborate. Okay. Elaborate. Okay. Elaborate. Okay. Ah, well, you could say the birds are a mixed blessing for the coconut, coconut, coconut grove humans. Uh, the birds choosing to live in the area makes for great tourism. That's what Coconut Grove is really known for, other than how fucking gorgeous it is. There's like 1,500 peacocks roaming around. Fuck yeah. Uh, but these large fucking birds have no concept of capitalism, property, property ownership, and sure as hell don't understand what the fuck a car is. Mm-mm. And we're going to circle back to this in a minute. Great. Now, with the peacock population going unchecked for years, and thus their fear of people non-existent, Coconut Grove has become a sort of real-life uh, Hitchcock movie for some. Great. That's right. <laughs> Uh, those calls we just played a moment ago, yeah. uh, though, they begin at dawn. No, and, no. Um, there's so many birds competing for a mate, they have to be louder than one another and more persistent. Oh my god, <laughs> so. the headaches. Uh, resident Tom Falco told of one of his experiences to Lulu Garcia Navarro of NPR. And would you like to read his experience? Would love to. Okay. okay. So he said, uh, the other day I was driving. It was like noon. It was the middle of the day, and I heard a screech. It sounds like a murder. <laughs> Sorry. You're like, you can't believe the sound of them. And I almost, like, had an accident because of that. I jumped. That's, right. That's Tom. That's Tom. <laughs> That's Tom. <laughs> Love Tom talking with the same cadence I usually do. <laughs> as many likes as possible. We love Tom. No shade, just relating. Relating to Tom. Yeah. Uh, Now, between the hours of screaming, there's 15-pound testosterone-fueled birds that give no fucks about anyone's new Prius. Uh, Commissioner Ken Russell told the AP, quote, Peacocks see their reflection on the side of the car and mistake it for a rival and attack with their beaks, end quote. Oh, my God. That's right. Uh, not the actor, but wildlife trapper James Dean told NPR, Amazing. quote, <laughs> one particular call that I did on a peacock down in the Palm Bay area, the guy had a car less than three days. It was brand new and it was completely destroyed by a male peacock. Just one? <laughs> end quote. That's right. Oh my God. Uh, so I'm going to show you a video of one bird caught on film. Now, it's on the smaller side of the peacock scale, but it'll give you an idea of, like, what their attack mode is. Uh, if you could just describe this little guy right here. Okay. Ooh. And what it's doing. <laughs> it's slow oh, motion Oh, my God. So you can imagine when they're bigger. Okay, so basically there's this bird. It's standing, it's facing this very clean car. Yeah, very, very shiny. Very shiny. It's probably looking at its reflection. And it does this little jump, peck, kick, right? Yeah. Parkour. Like Very parkour. It just, it jumps in the air, it pecks the car, and then also pushes it with its feet. And I can imagine if it did that quite a few times... You wouldn't want your car anymore. You would want a new car. <laughs> it's, you can only imagine the amount of scratching, denting, and so forth. The poor damn bird has no idea what that thing is. No. Ah, God. Jeez. So, between the screaming and the fighting, these literal angry birds do need to eat. Oh, um, God. Their diet consists of what the animal lovers of the area provide, like corn, wild bird seed, and cat food. 
Uh, and honestly, they eat just about everything else, including the residents' uh, gardens and plant life. Aww. Now, it goes without saying, uh, a bird shitting out cat food doesn't smell too great. No. But some residents love the birds to bits, uh, making their removal a contentious issue. Uh, an anonymous trapper in Miami Dad told the Miami Herald, quote, People take ownership of the peacocks like they would a cat or a dog. When trappers try to remove animals like ducks and peacocks, residents wield machetes and go after the trapper. What? Call police, kick and scream, end quote. Oh my god. Yes. There's like a dangerous cycle happening here. <laughs> there is. Um, there is. Oh my god. So it's it, kind of like that bird, but a person. Yeah. With a machete. <laughs> I just imagine, like, a person seeing their reflection in a car and just parkouring <laughs> their reflection yeah. with a machete. <sighs> Florida. Florida. There you go. Uh, officials are seeking a happy medium where some birds are removed, but not all. The Miami Herald states, quote, The city wants to lessen the peafowl population using a humane treatment, uh, a humane management plan implemented by Rancho Palos Verdes. Uh, in which excess peacocks are relocated where they can squawk, scream, and mate all night if they wish. Only the neighborhoods where the peacocks flock most densely will see any true change. End quote. I think, you know what, I think for the people who really, really love the peacocks, I think they should just be like, all right, if you love them, be their owner. Keep them in your yard. Yeah. See how that works. And then... um. They'll have pets, and then little, they'll realize... Little, little leashes. Um, oh, that's cute. Aww. Little sweaters. Little sweaters. <laughs> little peacock <laughs> sweaters. Little snow boots. Oh, my gosh. I meant this to be more of a punishment, but now I just like it. <laughs> so. Now I want one. Who doesn't? <laughs> so. Uh, so, females will be removed. Uh, excess, of course, excess birds. Uh, like, females will be removed between the months of November. What the hell's wrong with me? November. <laughs> November. <laughs> Let's do that again. They will be removed between the months of November and February when nests are empty, and the males will be removed when they've calmed the fuck down and trying not to pick a fight with inanimate objects. Yeah. And that is the end of, well, this segment, it's still happening in Florida as we speak, but oh. they'll figure it out. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Do you live strong, maybe. in Coconut Grove? Do you live in Coconut Grove? Can How's you, it going? Can you email us? How's your car? If you have a picture of your uh, fucked up by a peacock car, oh, man. Uh, send it to us. I would love to see it and hear your story. Um, also, this portion I, of the podcast made me uh, just about forget the first portion. See? There we go. Balance. Beautifully done. Balance. It's all about balance uh, in podcasting and in life. Yeah. So, it. <laughs> so <laughs> email us at well that's interesting pod at gmail uh clearly anything could be interesting so anything. don't be shy don't be shy tell T us about it all the things yeah so stay interesting please do <laughs> <laughs>